Hello, I'm Christabel Chamaret. I'm a clinical psychologist and for 40 years I've been working uh, in various settings, uh, 10 years in a male maximum security prison, um, eight years in private practice and 20 years with a family uh, counselling program that dealt with child sexual abuse called Safe Care. During those 40 years I've developed a series of simple diagrams that I use either with individual or groups um, to explain psychological concepts in a way that can help people heal and part of this is in a program called Helping Families Heal, which I take up into the northwest of Western Australia in working with Aboriginal communities. The first diagram I'm going to share with you is one I call the feelings jar. I sometimes used to call it the anger jar because of how I learnt about it, but it's actually the feelings jar. And what it represents is a jar with a lid. And it's a way of talking about how human beings handle their emotions and their feelings in their lives. The jar represents our body and the lid represents our relationship with other people and the world. When we're born, the jar is empty because a baby never bottles up any emotion. If a child is, a baby is unhappy, you know it, they cry and they keep uh, expressing that feeling until the, finish, the feeling is finished and then they move on to the next feeling. And we all start out in life that way. It's a very healthy way to be, to express our feelings as we have them. However, sooner or later, we get the message that it's not always in our best interest to express our feelings directly. And so we start to hold them inside. And at first, that works beautifully because the jar's empty and there's plenty of room. However, if we keep putting inside feelings that we don't feel able to express, either because they're confusing or we're afraid of how people might react um, or we're afraid of how we might react, then sooner or later, the jar starts filling up. And when it fills up, it's, it's a bit like a pressure cooker without a steam valve. It shows the pressure on the sides of the jar. As I said, that's our physical body and on the lid of the jar, which is our relationship with other people in the world. And so for some people, uh, they can be a chock-a-block full jar by the time they're seven years old. And that's really bad news because it means that as a child, they've experienced a lot of difficult um, experiences and they haven't been able to express them or to be comforted or, or to let them out. And so when a child is a chock-a-block full jar, it will show mainly through the sides of the jar, which is the physical body, and it will show in physical ways. So often a child uh, might feel uh, sick in their stomach. They might have a sick feeling or a yucky feeling. Um, uh, they might um, have pains or aches that they want comfort for. They might withdraw and um, be very quiet. Or they might have tantrums or bad behaviour that actually indicates there's something amiss, something's going wrong inside and they're not feeling happy about it. Also, wetting and uh, soiling accidents are another way the body is showing there's a little bit of stress going on here and this child is, is not coping with that. And so for some people, they might be very full of these feelings by the time they're seven. And as I said, that's bad news. For other people, they might be 70 years old when the jar is chock-a-block full. And that's bad news too, because if you've been pushing all your feelings down for 70 years, it's very difficult to find another way of doing it. And so when somebody is older and the jar's very full, it can leak out in certain ways. Like for example, um, a lot of older men when they're watching a, a movie or a TV might find tears streaming down their cheeks and they don't even know why, they can't explain it. But it might be that there's quite a lot of unexpressed grief in their lives. Or somebody might come along and say something almost quite harmlessly, but it, it triggers something from the past, the lid lifts up and out pours an overreaction to whatever it was that was said. And 
in that case, the person who's done the lifting of the lid often doesn't take any responsibility for it, even though maybe it would be good if they took some. And the person who's overreacted suddenly puts it all back inside and feels bad about having overreacted in that way. Now, some people are seven, some are 70, but all of us have this experience sometime in our life. Somewhere between seven and 70, we do reach the age where the jar is chock-a-block full and it's no longer working for us. And we call it different things like depression, um, sometimes postnatal depression or mental illness or life crisis, identity crisis. And what it means is that they've reached a point where pushing their feelings down is no longer working for them and they need to find other ways. Now, um, when people do look for other ways, there's some very easy ways that they find that they think work in the short term, but they don't. Um, one of the most common of these is that there are certain activities and behaviours that while you're doing them, the lid lifts up and it eases the pressure inside. And um, the person thinks, ah, I feel great. All those things have gone away. The only problem with that is that as soon as the activity or behaviour that they've been engaging in that lifted the lid is over, the lid comes down again and the pressure is back. And that's, that sets up an addiction to whatever it is that um, makes them feel better. And as with all addictions, it takes more and more uh, of the substance or the activity for less and less result. And, uh, and so it ends up with not solving the problem, but actually having additional problems. Now, the most common one of these, and I'm almost hinted at it by saying the substance or behavior, the most common short-term way in which people learn to handle their chock-a-block full jar is alcohol. And uh, the next most common is uh, drugs, usually, uh, the uh, soft drugs, um, gambling, uh, what else? Mine is eating. Chocolate biscuits can make me feel really good until I finish the whole packet and then I feel really bad. Um, so eating, uh, sex is another way where people can feel better while they're engaged in some kind of sexual activity, but when it stops, they might feel bad. Also, they feel hooked in and addicted to keeping on doing it to get rid of the feelings that they've got. So that's one of the most common short-term ways. There's another way that people accidentally discover, and these don't work in the long term either, and they, but they're just slightly different from this short-term way. They don't lift the lid and they don't ease the pressure. They strengthen the lid, they don't ease the pressure, but they dull the pain and they just help us to keep going a bit longer. But they only work in the short term as well, and then they cease to be um, helpful. Now these ones are cigarette smoking. That can actually just help cope with stress. Um, um, hard drugs, as, as opposed to say marijuana, um, the hard drugs often work to numb out or to help people be stronger, then there's other things that aren't in themselves bad, but they're not going to solve the problem. And prescription medication like antidepressants falls into that category, as does exercise. You know, when people say, ah, oh, when I'm feeling really uptight, I go and have a run or I chop wood. Um, so exercise and workaholism, so hard work and keeping yourself really busy, they're temporary ways of um, keeping going when you've got this problem of the chocker block full jar, but they're not the solution. The only solution I know, and there's only one of them, uh, is what I call drilling holes in the lid. And I like to think of my therapy sessions as holes in the lid. And when those holes in the lid are there, uh, I say to people, what we want to do, want to do is to not lift the lid up and let it all pour out so that somebody can get hurt, but to empty it in small manageable chunks and to let those feelings out in um, better ways. So the only way I know 
of dealing with a, a full feelings jar is to either have counselling or to go and, and speak your feelings and feel the feelings to somebody you trust in a situation of safety. And when I'm working with people, I will go through their lives in five year chunks looking for those bottled up feelings that they've never expressed. And I don't know what's in their feelings jar, neither do they, but we go fishing and uh, looking at what's happened to them in their lives. And sooner or later, out pops the feeling um, that hasn't been expressed. And you can always tell if that therapy is working because after a little while, the person doesn't automatically feel better but they feel lighter because they've let those feelings out. And so the key therapeutic me uh, method here is to feel the feeling that's been bottled in there. And uh, as I said, if somebody comes to me and I'll say to them, do you remember how angry you felt last time I saw you? And I say, oh yes, I'll never forget that. I say, well, try and feel that angry again. And often they'll say, that's strange. I can remember how angry I felt, but I can't feel it anymore. It's gone. And that means it's out of the jar. Or they might say to me, oh yes, I still feel angry. And then I know that we haven't fully emptied that feeling. There's more in there to be talked about and to be felt. Or it mightn't even be about that. It might be something deeper down that they haven't even got to and don't realize is there ready to be felt. So that's the first diagram the feelings jar, and we'll have a pause here and go on to the next ones later.